Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this honeybee bee on 12 millimeter plywood, hardwood plywood, and it routes out okay. I've used it before on previous projects, and the idea is we're going to route out all the colour sections, basically just leaving all the black lines and the black veins in the wings there and a nice circle there once we've done all the routing out and we removed all the coloured sections we will literally cut it out on a scroll saw to give it the shape that we see in front of us here now this is a scroll saw pattern i believe you could cut this all out on a scroll saw just as easy and then put it onto a backer i'm just going to try and route it all out in one go and we're going to inlay it all with coloured resin Nice white for the wings. I was going to use clear at one time, but that would mean putting yellow into there and then clear over the top and doing different levels. It just got a little bit too uh, fiddly for nice little fun projects for me. So we'll route out all these sections, popping our white for the wings and a bit of yellow in there. And I think we're going to do a red background on this one, just uh, so the yellow stands separately from the red. As always for me, we've got the sizes. It's literally 15 inches by 21 across we stuck it down in place and we've got good old carbon paper underneath you want a nice fresh piece this piece has been in the shed for a couple of years now that would not work as a carbon paper so you want nice fresh carbon paper have the dull side facing up and literally just draw around it with a pen or pencil whatever you prefer it takes five minutes i prefer it this way it gives you more of a feel of the project and you'll probably see things that you wouldn't see if you were to just stick that down. And you can do that. You could literally just stick that down straight to the plywood and route over the top. I've tried it on a previous project, only the ones, and I won't be doing it again. And there's different transfer methods, acetone, thinners, where you turn it upside down and give it a wetting over and rub the back. And just too much like hard word work for me. Five minutes going round, nice and relaxing. That way you've got your image there, really nice. And you can use that over and over again. So you've got to do four of those. You can use that one piece of paper. Whereas the routing over the paper and the acetone, you can only use it the once. So think about saving your papers and your inks, obviously. And there's our image, just about to see them on there. It's a good size. So we're literally going to route it all out. For me, as always, I like to use these CNC bits. They come in different degrees, which is basically just the angle at the end. 15, 20s, 30s, and so on. This is a 15 today, I believe. You might just get it in focus here. Yep, there we go. So that's a 15. They have a small shaft on them, a 3.175 millimeter. That's the same size as the ones that go into your Dremel. And that will fit a Dremel, no problem. And you can use the router attachment for the Dremel and do this just as easy. But for my quarter inch router, I need a 6.35 millimeter adapter reducer collet. You can just see that there. Basically, a little tube with some splits down either side. And that just fits into there nicely. That's now got a quarter inch shaft, and that will fit your router no problem. Depth wise, I work on three millimeters for stuff like this with resin. There's no need to go any deeper. You're just going to waste your resin, and it's not the cheapest stuff to buy. So I base mine on three millimetres. I made a little gauge here if I get the right one. There we go. Number two, as I say, that one's about four. And that's just the same thickness as the CNC bit. And that is the depth I will work at. You can buy proper depth gauges. I made another one here out of wood. When I do a five layer piece. And you'll set your route a bit to that. And if you go away, come back. You can always got the same gauge. And so on and so on and so on. So three millimetres for me, we'll route out all the lines, always up to the lines. If it's outset, you'll come up to the line on the outside. If we were removing the B, we'll come up to the line on the inside. Never route out on the line, or on these kind of projects anyway. Always up to the line. So we'll pop this into the router, we'll pop it into the adapter, then we'll pop it into the router. Set it to three millimetres and basically start routing this one out. Once we've done all that, I'll come in with these end milling bits. These are fantastic for clearing out and they'll clear this out no problem. They come in various sizes like so. 
See if I've got a little CNC bit in there. If I had my new, new uh, blade, shall I say, I'd have to give them to one side like so, so we don't get mixed up with the older ones. So we'll take one of those, and they fit the same adapter. Some come with these little barrier things on, little coloured barriers. They also come now without them, so if you can't find them with the barrier, the ones without are just the same. And that'll just slot into there. Same again, we'll set it to 3mm, and we'll just go in and route out all the shaded areas. I do advise you to go in with a pencil and do those shaded areas, because you'll go away, come back, and you'll start routing out one of the wings. Well, that's it. So, as you go along, just keeping it nice and shaded. That way, you'll have no mishaps. Okay, let's pop that one in the router, and then we'll start routing this one out. Right, we've made it all the way round with the CNC bits. No problem whatsoever. Now, it might look, when we look at this, it's quite rough and dusty. I don't know if you can get that right in the light here. I do apologise about the lighting. But I can guarantee you, it does a nice, neat job. And all you're seeing there, basically, is compacted dust. I mean, if you were to go around and clear that up, at least you just scrape all that out there. And you can all see how clear that is. And notice we've still got the pencil line there. Remember, we've routed out up to the line on 90% of it. It doesn't really matter if you're not quite there. I won't be able to concern. But all that is in there is compacted dust. So if you had a nice blower, you could blow that out. And you can see from there, hopefully, how nice those lines are. So that's not enough of what we need. So we've gone round all our lines. Now it's just a simple case of popping on the end milling bit. These are all eBay or Amazon for me. They don't cost too much and they're just what I use. There's different bits out there. You can get profile bits, liner bits, spiral up cuts, whatever you want. Try a few bits and just find one you're comfortable with. But I've certainly got no issues with CNC bits and end milling bits. And they're fairly cheap off eBay, Amazon, like I just said. If somebody's just starting out and you don't want to go and waste a lot of money on all, all these fancy parts. Now I've picked one out, just one that I know will fit into these areas here. So it's just a simple case of popping it into the adapter collet, remember? Pushing it down to that little barrier, like so. And we'll set it to the same depth, which is three millimetres, roughly. In there, remember, one of those. or because we've removed certain sections, we can literally just set it to that depth there and go along now and basically remove all this penciled out area. Okay, let's remove all the area now. Thank you. 
Right, you can see from that, we've made it all the way around. We've not lost anything. This is just a different layers of uh, wood or whatever they use to make plywood with. It's obviously layered. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, seven layers on that one. So don't get panicky if you see stuff like that. That's just basically the layers as they are. So we've gone all the way around. Everything's come out nicely so far, so good. You can just about make those pencil lines here. So we'll have those to sand down afterwards. The only thing I do find with plywood, if you were to put paint in this, normally you just put it in quite easily and then sand over it. Too much sanding can remove the top layer of the uh, the plywood itself. So just be a bit careful of that if you are going to paint and do a lot of sanding. This won't affect me today because we're just going to put resin in here and then that's it. Once it's cured, it's finished. Before that, we have a few more steps to do beforehand one of those being just a little general tidy up i like to use a flexi cable i cannot recommend these enough they're just cheap ebay again and they're attached to the end of the dremel at the other end there and they're just ideal for holding with if you want to do a bit of carving a bit of sanding down with some sanding drums on i tend to use these little cheap cheap engraving bits ebay again for me you'll get a pack of 30 like that and they come with round heads flat heads whatever and there's plenty of plenty to play with I get one with a nice little flat head, nice now a pointed one, and that'll be enough just to get into these little tight areas where which you probably couldn't get in with the end milling bit, or at least we should have put a smaller bit on to get in there. But for quickness, it's just as easy just to go around with this. So we have a nice general tidy up, should I say, around the old piece, and then we just spit a sandpaper basically just to remove the pencil lines, and then we'll get onto the scroll saw. And then we'll come in back and then we'll cut it all out. Let's give it a little tidy up first. Right, that's enough tidying up and general cleaning up for me we've got all our nice edges there we've sanded them down just a little bit if you uh, remember before i was on about sanding down too much and you can sand away this top layer if you just look there look that's basically what i was saying so if you were going to put paint in this and doing a lot of sanding down be prepared to lose your top layer so you can just see that other in between there but that's not going to affect us because we are going to either stain all this or spray it or black so that doesn't matter on this occasion so next stage for me is just to literally just cut it out on a scroll saw nothing too fantastic nice easy little cut all the way around for me personally i like to use spiral blades they cut in any direction because of the teeth of the blade are spiral to full length so you could basically just pop your blade in there and just gently go around with your wood like so Ideal for big projects like this because there's no turning of your wood and it's not going to catch the back neck of the scroll saw. So they're ideal for me. Unfortunately, with my little trapper, I have to use these adapter clamps and they just obviously just hook on top and bottom. Wants to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. Another couple of blades are pin blades. You get a pin at both ends like so. There we go. And obviously one at that end. They just clip onto your more cheaper basic swords. You could use it on this one. No problem whatsoever. Nothing too fantastic. Same with these. Smooth on the way down. And I want to feel jagged on the way up. That way you know your blades in the right way. And for more detailed work, is what your professional boys use. It's a pinless blade. Very small and thin. Ideal for inner cuts. Where basically you want to draw, drill a small pilot hole. And you've got to feed it in. Whereas these ones with the pins. Those pins would get in if you're trying to feed it into a small hole. But for me, I just prefer spiral blades. Pegasus number five. So we'll pop this in and if we just cut this out, quick little sanding down and then be ready for spraying or painting.
Right, that's all cut out nicely. No problem, nothing too complicated, apart from the actual size of the thing. So we, we'll get round, and there we go. So that's our basic shape of our finished piece here. I'll just get a bit of sandpaper now. I've got no issues with them spiral blades. They cut out really smooth is what I'm concerned. Some people are not too happy with them. So we just have a quick look around now. Sometimes with this plywood, you might get the odd little void, which basically a little hole in between. And we've got lucky today. We've got nothing good at all. No, there we go. Look, we've got one there. Little mini hole. You probably can't even see it. So I would get a little bit of filler and fill that in. But apart from that, no problem whatsoever. I will get a bit of sandpaper. And just take away those little knobbly bits like so. Takes a matter of seconds, minutes, and that's ready for our next stage now. So I'll quickly just give this tidy up. And then when we come back, we'll be ready for either staining this or putting some spray paint on. Back in a minute. Right, that's enough sanding of those edges. We filled in our little hole that we had somewhere along the way there. Just filled it in nicely. We've smoothed it all down and we've rounded those edges off. So that's it as far as the router, scroll saw and tidying up is done. Now it's just a simple case of colouring this in. The actual B itself and the framework. I've actually gone out and purchased some nice black paint. Nice brand new, I've not even opened that up yet. It's all got the seal on. And originally I was gonna, excuse me, we're gonna spray it all black. But uh, we'll save that for another day. I've got a little bit of wood dye left. And I say a little bit, just to say the wood dye, that's a dark teak. And it's just enough to give me a little lid for there. So I'm just gonna basically start filling this up. And if I run out, I'll just put some light tea on and mix it all in together. Just trial and error. Good thing about this, it does spread well. So you can just start like that. And you can see how that spreads nicely. And it's, it's dark enough. And we want to go right to the edges and we need to get down those little side walls. You will see it will soak into those side sections. Obviously for the resin, we're going to come up nearly to the top. We still want to be able to fill all this routed out area. On other projects, I would fill up overfill and sand it all flush. We don't want to do it on this one. We want to be able to feel it. So just inside those bits here, it might just be easy just to cover the whole lot. I'm going to do all the surround and everything the same. So I'll come back when this is all nicely filled in. And hopefully we'll have enough left to complete the thing. If not... Just throw a bit of light in there, mix it all in together. It doesn't matter, does it? Something we just make up as we go along. I'll be back in a minute when it's all nicely done. Right, it's the next day. Everything's nice and dry. Now, originally on this project, I wanted to lower the circle area just slightly by a couple of mil, just so it looks like the actual B is resting on the circle. And obviously the wing will be slightly raised. But save yourself a lot of trouble of lowering that therefore we'd have to lower all that inner circle as well it's easier just to put a dark stain on the bee which we just had enough in that container and i went for the light teak one on the surround so basically as you look at that it's hard to tell now but once the spray's gone on a lot better you can see the slight difference in coloration from the two from the circle to the actual wing so hopefully that's going to get the impression that, that wing is actually resting on top of that Whereas in theory, it's just one level all the way around. Just saves me the trouble of lowering all this down so we can lower that little outer rim. Just so basically we get a lip there and a lip there. And obviously we've done the same on that one as well. So hopefully that will work out and it just saves a lot of trouble of routing that a little bit more. So the next day to now, that's covered all nicely. It just literally just spray this with varnish. I have no preference pref can't speak today, I do apologise. I have no preference to what kind of finish I use. It's going to be a 151 spray clear lacquer. It could be a polyurethane finish. These are ideal for indoor projects. For outdoor projects, you want more of your polyurethanes and your spyurethanes and some of your more expensive finishes. But for me, for these little indoor ones, these little ones will work fine. So, just a simple case of spraying it. And then we'll give it three or four coats. One... Because I do like a nice 
shine a nice finish on the project and two hopefully this little bit of varnish will help seal all this plywood and inside those routed areas just so when we come to put the resin in or paint if you are going to paint it you won't bleed into the side walls and with the resin we won't get any so many bubbles coming up as the resin soaks into the wood there is wood sealers out there and whatever so you guys can do your research on that but for me a quick couple of sprays with this is plenty it'll give it a nice finish and like i say it to seal it all and once we put our resin in remember we're not going to overflow it we're just going to come level with the actual routed area so when it cures it will go concave slightly and that will be our finished project because obviously we've already put our resin on uh our spray on should i say so it is just just a case of spraying on like so you see how dark that goes and we'll do all the side bits as well i'll go outside in the sunshine today to finish this one off three or four coats and then when we come back it will be time to resin right we've sprayed all our varnish on you might just see that shine there and that's enough for what i need you can do three more coats if you wanted to and hopefully that sealed all that plywood in there no problem we'll see better when we go outside or back to the shed in natural lighting now basically what i'm going to do now is just fill this all in with resin i'm going to use in vista one today it's two part resin you get a your resin and b your adner i'll just swap those around you get a your resin b your adner just check your mixes. This is a one-to-one -one mix. So however much resin we put in, we put exactly the same amount of the adner. So now I like to use little party cups, like so, little plastic containers there. They're ideal. They have a little mark on the side, little grooves on the side. And I tend to put B for the adner, and I go up five. I'd rather mix small amounts than doing a full cup full, full and just having it wasted. So. B for the Ardner, and obviously A for the resin. So I'll just literally go up to that mark there. It's pure guesswork for me. Up to that mark with there. Do smaller amounts. We can always mix a bit more and add on. That way, like I say, you're not having a lot wasted. So I'll put the same amount, and then I'll just pour one into the other. Some resins, at least, do say use a third cup. Personally, myself, I've never had any issues with pouring it in. For colour wise, there's dyes, inks powders i've got a bag full of tricks here that i don't really use anymore now i just prefer to use acrylic paints nothing too expensive just nice cheap acrylic paints put a bit of that in your resin mix it in and we're basically just going to start filling this one in so we have the red for the background we'll have some nice bit of white for the wings you could have got clear in there but obviously we don't want all this to see on the inside and a bit of yellow stroke orange for the rest of it okay i'll mix this off camera and when we come back we'll add our bit of resin and we can start filling this one in i like to use the back of the spoons there these little party spoons i just grab this one quickly these are ideal for mixing because they do have a little trough at the back a little groove and you can scoop it up and we can feed it in you can use syringes or them petite things if you require but i'll crap with the back of that and a little cocktail stick and that will help us just feed it along the way Right, I'll mix this resin up quickly. Please put your gloves on, don't copy me. Plenty of ventilation and you want a nice mask on. It's quite toxic. Some people can have issues as regards to rashes and breathing and stuff like that and the smell, so you have been warned. Okay, I'll mix this up and when we come back, we can start filling this one in. Right, we've mixed our resin together. Hopefully, that'll be enough just to do our circle for now i'm just going to do the back a bit for now and obviously we'll move on to the next color and so on and so on so we'll speed things up there because once you've done one color and mixed it it's basically the same thing as we go along so there's our resin acrylic paints we don't want too much in i'd rather look, add a little bit we can pour a little bit out and if we want it a bit thicker we can always add a little bit more so a nice little squirt up there like so Give a good mix around. If anything, I should have maybe coloured all the background. I'm hoping we've got it thick enough. We don't want to see these darker sections coming through. So next time, I think I'll just use the light teak. 
and basically cover the, th uh, the old complete thing. But hopefully this will be thick enough. You can see from that, it might look slightly orange in the camera, but it is a nice red. And we'll see better once we go outside. So for now, just give it a nice mix round. Like so. We can pour a little bit out. Bigger areas, you'll be able to pour it. Smaller areas like so. I'll just get a little scoop. You'll be able to scoop it in like that. And we can see if that's dark enough or not. Like so. Okay, we get a general idea. I'll quickly just carry on mixing our colours and then we just fill this in as we go along. And remember, use our little cocktail stick just to help it into those corners. Right, there's all our bits nicely filled in. Now as I've been putting each colour in, I literally get a lighter or a bigger version like so, and just skim over the top. That just helps remove any little air bubbles, and you'll see them, you won't pick it up on the camera, but you'll see them all disappearing. And I'll come back in five minutes, just to make sure, and just give it another little skim over so you can more or less see from that we will get a better image once we go down into the shed again but for now this will have to do now get a nice cover for it a tray or some description because any dust flies this will be like a magnet any ears any loose ears or anything you'll find them in your red and so try and cover it up with something of some description we'll come back in a good 24 hours and hopefully this little project will be done. We'll come back in 24 to 48 hours. Right, it's roughly 24 hours later. Personally, I would leave this another three or four days just to make sure it's proper cured. On some resin sites and groups, they reckon it takes up to 30 days to fully cure. I'll leave that up to you to decide on that one. But for 24 hours, you can certainly touch it and pass it about and hang it up on the wall. If you're posting these, I'll certainly leave it a couple of weeks before you decided to pack them away somewhere. So you can see from that, 24 hours later, everything's nice and solid enough for now. But I'll certainly leave it for another couple of more days to get sorted. Any issues with this one at all? There's a little speck there. Now you could probably warm that up with a heat gun and press that down. I'm not bothered. And if you remember me mentioning about the stainer at the back to do the full back piece. Now we got away with it with the white and we got away with it with the yellow. But you might not be able to pick it up on here. But if you look really close, you can still see that stain at the back from the bare plywood to where the stain's gone. Now I think we've got away as regards to it looks okay. You might see it better up there. These little sections there, look, you see little dark shadowed areas. Personally, I think that adds, adds to it in the end of the day, but just be conscious of that. I did say that I should have probably just stained the full piece, but we'll know for next time. And as regards to the rest of the resin, I've got no problems with that. For hanging purposes, I have literally just put a little hook on the back and that's fine. I've tested it on the wall and it hangs nice and central. Just make sure you get a small screw with those the last thing you want to do is put a screw in the back and have it popping out the resin at the front. So apart from that one little speck there, just catch it rightly. You'll see where my thumb is. I'm okay with the rest of it. It's fine. Now you might be wondering what happened to the extra legs that it had. If you remember, there's two legs there. Obviously, you wouldn't see those because we put the white resin in. So there's no need to route them out at all. So it is what it is. And I'm quite happy with that. It's, it's, a, it's a project. It came out okay. And it's worked the way we wanted it. So it's routed out on 12 millimeter plywood. We use our CNC bits to do our lines. And we cleared it all out with the end milling bits, if you remember. 
that played out really nice and it, it comes out really well plywood i've certainly got no problem we managed just to stain it with a dark teak for the actual bumblebee and a lighter teak for the side frame and we finished it all off with polyurethane just to give it that little bit of a shine and to seal any bits of holes or whatever there is inside that ply that just helps stops your resin bleeding and you don't get so many bubbles as if it's soaking into the wood and that's it and imagine it 21 inches across by roughly 15 inches high that's our little project finished one bumblebee routed out on 12 millimeter plywood and inlaid with a resin Mr. One resin this time round, mixed with just cheap acrylic paints. Thank you very much for watching.